dispel some of the rumors and the myths that some of you may have had about my little friends here, okay? So some of it you probably already heard, probably already know, but we'll talk a little bit about them, okay? Um, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm holding this snake, and one of the myths about it is that snakes are slimy. You all heard that? No. Well, snakes aren't slimy. Okay, so if any of you, have you ever held a snake? Yes. Okay, so when you tell it, you know, it's not slimy, it's just cold and smooth, right? And that's because they're cold-blooded animals. And as cold-blooded animals go, uh, you're warm-blooded, so you generate your heat from within. So when you're cold, you go outside and you put a jacket on. When you're warm, you go outside, you take your jacket off. Snakes don't do that. Snakes have to get warm from outside or get cooled off by getting inside. So they're cold, um, uh, war or cold blooded, you're warm blooded. And so what you'll see is people, one of the myths is the snakes go outside and live in the sun and they're happy campers. Well, that's not true. A snake can only go outside until it gets its body temperature regulated and then it's got to get in out of the sun or else it could die. So one of the myths is that snakes don't really sit there and love sun. Okay, just enough to get warm and then get back into their dens or their little holes or whatever they're hiding in. And the other rumor is that when they get cold, you know, they uh, get more active because they're trying to get warmed up. Well, when they're cold, they're cold and they don't want to move. <laughs> so they stay in their dens so you don't see them. Anyway, this is an Arizona mountain king snake. And the coloration on this is pretty neat. At least I think so. Of course, I have a bias. I think they're pretty because I like my snakes. But this coloration to everybody looks a little like it could be a venomous snake, right? It's got kind of a scary looking colors to it. Well, that's part of the, the idea. This snake is non-venomous, but it does something called mimicry. It mimics the uh, coral snake, which we have here, which is a venomous snake. It's one of the four venomous snakes we have in the United States. We've got rattlesnakes, Coral snakes, water moccasins, and copperheads. So this snake tries to pretend to be a coral snake to keep predators away from it. And there's a little saying, it's called red to black, venom lack, red to yellow, kill a fellow. Anybody ever heard that? So as long as you look in at her, you got black, red, black, black, red, black, red to black, venom lack. She's harmless. If it was red to yellow, red to yellow, then it's a coral snake. Not that I'm expecting you all to go out and grab a coral snake today, uh, but if you're ever out and you do see one, unless you really know, I would just recommend you just kind of let it go on its merry way and you walk away so that you don't get bit. Because the coral snakes are pretty dangerous. They uh, uh, could uh, be serious if they did bite you. I'm sorry? Yeah, that, that happens, especially baby rattlesnakes, because the, uh, baby rattlesnakes don't have a rattle. Did you all know that? They come out, they have a little thing called a button at the end, and so they shake their little tail like they're trying to scare you. They can't they make any noise. But a, sh a snake sheds about two times a year, but when they're babies, they shed as many as six times. And so every time a rattlesnake sheds its skin, it gets a new little segment on its rattle. So for the first couple, three, they call them buzzers it sounds like a buzzer because it doesn't make any noise. The longer it gets, the more it starts to rattle. But there's a myth right there. People think that you could tell the age of a rattlesnake by the number of rattles on its tail. And that's not true. I just said uh, baby rattlesnake could shed as many as six times a year. So all you can tell by a snake is how many times it's shed, not necessarily how old they are. And the thing is, the older snakes get out and they walk in the trees and logs and rocks and they get them all knocked off. So a big old rattlesnake might only have 10 rattles in there because that's 10 years old. That snake could be, you know, uh, a lot older than that because you still know how many rattles have got knocked off. The rattle is made out of the same stuff as your fingernails. Everybody asks what that is. So it's the same kind of a, uh, what do you call your fingernail? Keratin. Keratin. So that's what, that's it. Now, a couple other real quick questions I'll start showing instead of the snakes. But everybody's been watching this snake and it's been sticking its tongue out, all right? 
everybody thinks, not everybody, the people tell you that uh, snakes use their tongue to sting you with. Anybody ever hear that? Well, does anybody know what a snake does with its tongue? Yes. Um, they use it to figure out their surroundings. Exactly. It's its its, it's nose. Uh, you have your nose to smell and check things out. Its tongue is picking up little particles and bringing it back into the top of its mouth. Okay. And uh, so it doesn't sting with its tongue. It actually is smelling with its tongue. The other thing is people think, oh, it stings with its tail because it's got this little sharp point. Well, I'm being stung then, I guess. Huh? Ow, ow, ow. No. It's, I always tell people a snake has to end somewhere. So it ends with that little point. Okay. So snakes don't sting with their tongue and they don't sting with their tail. Obviously, it's a snake because it doesn't have any legs. However, if you get a big old boa, which we happen to have one here today, um, they have what they call vestigial, vestigial spurs, which are legs, apparently people believe back in the prehistoric days. So there's a little tiny spurs that somebody thinks used to be the legs on snakes. Because as they evolved, they came from lizards into snakes. All right. The other thing is, if you look at our snakes real closely, when you get up to them, you'll notice that they don't have any eyelids. They don't blink. And so people think that what a snake does is it goes up to its prey and it sits there and it hypnotizes it. And then when the bird or the little mouse is hypnotized, then it eats it. Well, that's really not true. It's just that they don't have any eyelids as they can't blink their eyes. So uh, I always tell people, if you ever want to get into a, a staring contest with a snake, you lose. They can't, they can't blink. And people, well, if they don't blink, how can they sleep? They can't close their eyes. Well, they like nice dark places. And they curl up inside themselves, put their head inside. But when you look at a sleeping snake, their little pupils go down into the front of their eyes and they look cross-eyed. If you looked at them, they're, they're going down. They sink them down there to get as much light out of the way. So our, when you look at my snakes in the cages you walk by, you can tell which ones are sleeping by looking at their eyes real closely. And this young lady just laid 12 eggs uh, early in the summer and they hatched. And this is one of her little babies. We thought it'd be kind of cute today to let you see what a little, that's probably a one month old snake. And it'll eventually grow up to be her. And pretty much the same color pattern and uh, kind of fun. So. That's when I tell you how many snakes I got. It's because we have a lot of little babies right now, okay? So an Arizona Mountain King snake. And then we have here a cousin of hers. Uh, this is a, this is a uh, Texas king snake, or it's known as a variable king snake because the color pattern changes a lot, okay? Uh, this is about as big as this one gets. They don't get much bigger, but you can see kind of a kind of a like a shadowy bluish color. Okay, if you look at her eyes or his eyes when you get up close, they're blue too. So the term for in herpetology is that they're in the blue, and the blue means they're getting ready to shed. So at this point in time, they get really dull. It takes about a week to ten days. They look pretty weird for a while, and then all of a sudden that blue kind of goes away, and then about two or three days later, they shed their skin. And the fun part about snakes when they shed their skin is it's like taking a glove off of you. You pull the glove off, it comes off backwards. So does their skin. They basically walk through their skin. They scrape the noses, okay, and they get it started up here, and then it falls back, and they just walk out of their skin. So when you see a snake skin, it's as long as the snake, Actually, it's a little longer because it stretches, and that means that it's it's fully shed its skin until it does it again. Like I said, maybe uh, uh, two times a year, a snake will shed when they're adults. When they're babies, it could be four to six times. So anyway, we won't be uh, doing much with her today because she, in fact, is, is shedding, so we don't want to be irritated. Oh, ouch. Did she do that? Yes. Now, this is another one that demonstrates trying to be mean and venomous. This is a mandarin rat snake from Asia. They live up in the hills. 
and uh, you never see them. They kind of live in crevices and uh, caves and in the, you know, the rocks. Um, they like it a little colder than the other snakes. And, uh, but this color pattern is to prevent predators from coming to get it. It looks pretty venomous as well, right? Uh, you see, she's very calm, doesn't look any different than the other ones, except uh, when it comes time to feeding where they live in the wild, this snake doesn't, well, it can't eat rats and it can't eat mice, birds, but its favorite food is bats. So it's a fun thing if you, how does it catch a bat? Doesn't have any arms, doesn't have any legs. Uh, lays on the ground, the bats are in the air. How do you, how's it catch a bat? What these do is they hang out over the tops of caves on the rocks and they literally hang there like this. They hang there and they wait and they sit still and they look like twigs on all the trees that are out there. And when the bats come out at night, you start fluttering by them, these things strike. They're fast enough to catch a bat in flight. This is, that's a pretty quick little snake. You look at him now, he looks kind of mm, not doing much, <laughs> but that's a pretty quick little snake. So I just like them because I think the color pattern is pretty neat. Uh, they're usually fairly calm snakes. Uh, I would say if I'm talking about making them into pets, I wouldn't think this would be a very good pet for one reason, is that they are fossorial, which means they do hide. So they're always under their rocks. And I just got bit. See that? Snakes can't bite. Thank you very much. And now this is another fun one. This is a western hognose snake. These are one of my favorites. In the wild, uh, this is about as big as she gets. In the wild, I mean, she looks pretty mean, right? I mean, she's looking uh, pretty like a rattlesnake. Well, that's what they try to do. These actually try to mimic rattlesnakes. So what she does in the wild is she sits there, and if you come up to her or any predator comes up to her, she takes her tail, she puts it in the grass or the leaf, and she starts to rattle her tail, or wiggle her tail, and all of a sudden it sounds like a rattlesnake. Well, if that doesn't work, she sits there, and she blows herself up and she hisses. She makes herself look bigger and meaner and she hisses at you and then she starts striking at you, just like a rattlesnake would do. Well, if that doesn't work, she has a third little trick. She turns upside down and plays dead because most predators don't want to eat dead things. They want to eat things that are alive. So she lays upside down and pretends she's dead. If you pick her up and turn her back over like she's supposed to be alive, she rolls back over because she's dead. <laughs> so I'm, I'm dead. I don't want to move. So then you pick her up and you put her down. She'll roll back over. Well, this happens at first, especially with the little babies when they hatch. It's their normal defensive routine. They lay there upside down dead for about a minute. And then they move their head a little bit. And if they don't see or feel anything, then they turn over and they stroll away. So that they make it kind of fun. The other thing is if you come up and you touch these snakes, all the other ones are fairly smooth, but she has got a real raspy feel to her. She's got a very rough scale. And if you put your hands backwards on the scales, it, they, they, they kind of like, they, they prick at you because they're kind of uh, sharp. But again, she won't do anything to you. And she is one of my favorites because she likes these kind of shows. She likes to be out. She likes to be held. She's very alert in the room. She's the only one that I've got that's all day long looking. If you walk in the room, she knows somebody's in there. She's looking around to see what's going on. You go over to the cage, she comes to the top. She wants to be out. So when I'm on there and I'm, the computer's in that room, should I take her out so I can hold her and let her sit there? And She's about the only one I do that with. So I guess I can call her really one of my pet snakes because she is a, a fun one. So you all get a chance to see her. Okay, then this is my all-time favorite snake. Okay, this is an eastern indigo snake. It's America's longest non-venomous snake. It's actually America's longest 
snake. They get to be about nine and a half feet long. Uh, they can live up to about 20 years in the wild and about 30 years in captivity. This one is a 22 year old snake. I've had her for quite a while. Uh, they are the king of the food chain in Texas. Well, I guess there's a, there's a subspecies of Texas, but Florida, uh, Georgia, South Carolina, right? On the top of the food chain, this thing will eat rats, mice, birds, squirrels, rabbits, toads, frogs, snakes, lizards, everything. Florida, right? Florida. Florida. Baby alligators, if it can run into one. Yes, this thing is, they're amazing. They're the top of the food chain. There's nothing that can, walk. anything walks by, it's food for one of these, all right? Now, in captivity, it gets rats. I don't take my time trying to feed everything else to it. But the bigger ones, which we've had, the seven, eight footer ones, they'll eat as many two or three rats at a sitting. They're also very um, uh, active. They're active all the time. They're forever on the move for feeding. So you, they are a little tougher to maintain as a, a pet snake because you've got to do feed, do feed them a lot, which means that means you have to take care of them. And I always tell people, uh, especially the younger kids, all of you have dogs, cats. Uh, okay, you have to feed your dog every day, right? If you didn't feed your dog every day, is he going to be happy with you? Thank you. That's two now. <laughs> they're getting they're getting uh, warmed up. It's been all day, and now I'm starting to get a little activity here. Um, if you have a cat, a bird, you got to feed them every day, or they're not very happy. And they go to the bathroom every day. One of your chores is probably to clean up after your dog or your cat, right? And if you don't, your parents aren't very happy. <laughs> not your dog. You don't care. All right, but. My snakes, I feed them every two weeks. Wow. Um, they go to the bathroom every two weeks. They only need water once a month. So uh, for pets, these are pretty easily maintained animals. I have another fun thing too. Matter of fact, you're the last show for the season. And then my snakes are going to go into hibernation. You all know what that is. Animals go to sleep for the winter. November 1st, they all get out of their cages. I put them in the special cages that go into the room. We turn off the light, we turn off the heat, we don't feed them, and we don't get them for months. They won't eat again until March. I don't think any of your pets would live any longer if you did that. I, I think you'd not be happy with what you'd find in the closet after four months. Okay, so that's an interesting thing about raising reptiles, right? I mean, that sounds kind of sad. I'm sorry to say it, but it's just that that's an interesting way. These animals live a different lifestyle, which is, for me, it gives me a four-month break. Not bad. I mean, actually, I like to go see them every once in a while, but I just do that to maintain and make sure they are okay, make sure everything's going fine. But for fun, you can't beat a snake for a pet. Also, I like to tell people, especially parents that don't want your, you to have snakes, they don't bark. They don't have fleas. They don't pee on the carpet. They don't shred the furniture. Matter of fact, uh, the only thing is you really want to keep them in the cage because you don't want them out and be loose, right? But anyway, my favorite snake. Oh, I mean, the story is these are endangered. And we got a couple places. We were trying to raise these early on um, to repopulate some areas. But the federal fish and game department decided that they may have diseases from captivity that if we introduced them back in the wild, they would give to the wild animals. And so what ended up happening was that program kind of got squashed. So uh, I'm believe um, we had them for a little while and uh, everything was going fine. And uh, then they just said, no, we're gonna do this program. About a year ago, thank you. About a year ago, they decided uh, to start the program again. And they had 15 indigo snakes they were gonna release in an area where they hadn't seen an indigo snake in 10 years. And we were all happy, this is gonna be great. Maybe they'll open up this program again and we can start raising and breeding them and let them go. Hurricane Ian hit, guess where it hit? Right where they were gonna let them all go. Wiped out the area. 
So now they're not sure whether there's enough food in there for them or shelters. So they're going to wait and see about a year and see if maybe we can start to reintroduce them. Okay, last but not least is my little tuberose boa. Little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's pretty heavy. <laughs> She's about seven feet long. <laughs> I'm sure she really loved that. Um, she weighs about 40 pounds, <laughs> maybe a little more. She's a constrictor. So you see her always trying to just grab on. She wants to hold, okay, but she's actually a fairly calm snake. Uh, and now in her case, when we talk about feeding schedule, she eats about once a month. And she'll eat a couple rats, and, and that's it for her. They got a very low metabolism. They don't need a lot. Theoretically, these are the snakes you always hear about that don't eat for a year, get one meal and then not eat. So she's just very happy and content. But uh, when we have her out here, you can come by and feel her. She's nice and she feels very smooth and a little bit cold, but smooth and, <coughs> and heavy. And what we've been doing in the other classes is you can come up and maybe three or four of you can try to grab her and hold her all at one time. And we'll just keep an eye out. I'll keep them near the head so that you don't have to worry about that. But hey, if you really want to have an experience, this would be the one that you get to, to play with here today. Okay, huh? Did you? Well, people keep asking me how this is my longest snake. I've had longer snakes. Right now, this is my biggest snake. Um, but my biggest snake ever was a 16-foot reticulated python that weighed about 180 pounds. Oh. So uh, back then, when I was about 180 pounds, my snake and I weighed about the same. Uh, that thing was pretty tough to take care of. And uh, uh, I used to bring it to shows like this. It'd be from like here to the wall, and you get about 10 kids holding it. She just loved being out. I had her in a duffel bag, and I get all done like I just did here, and I pull the snake up and just keep coming out, coming out, coming out. And just very gentle. It's a great reticulated python. But in the wild, they're one of the more aggressive snakes. And they can get to be 33 feet long. So that's a pretty good sized snake. There's been rumors of them being uh, as much as 40 feet. Nobody's ever found one that big. And as a matter of fact, the New York Zoo and St. Louis Zoo both have prizes. I think now one of the prizes is up to uh, $50,000 if anybody can find a 40 foot reticulated python. Okay, so just so you know, if you wanna go looking for a big snake and make some money, you'll find yourself a 40 foot reticulated python. Finding and catching are those two different things. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and like I said, uh, part of the thing is I like to do this, especially for the little younger kids, to show you that you know snakes aren't what they do on TV. They're not snakes on a plane. They're not anaconda. They're not, or whatever that movie was where oh, the guy turned into a snake notice. slither. Yeah. Okay, they're not after you. They don't care. They just want to maintain themselves. They're not as bad as people make them out to be in all those myths we've been talking about. They're pretty nice snakes. They're pretty nice pets. Okay, like I said, they're pretty easy to maintain, mostly. So, any questions? Yes? Uh, she, like, she no, uh, she's breathing. That's she, she's hissing. It sounds like hissing, but she's actually breathing. A snake only has one lung. It goes from about her head to about down here. It's a pretty long thing. And they take deep breaths. She can literally live underwater for about a minute or a, an hour without any taking any air in. Um, they're great swimmers. All snakes are great swimmers. Yeah. It was really, really fast. Yeah, they all, oh, yeah, if you see them in the water, all of them are really fast. You uh, get in the water, he can keep up with you or even better than you when they swim. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Um, when snakes don't have like uh, vibrant colors, like when they're younger, they get more vibrant later on, right? Uh, it's sometimes. actually the other way around. Really? Yeah, the older they get, the more dull they get. And uh, you know, like birds, usually male birds are a lot more colorful than the females. 
That's not the case of snakes. The, the color is their color. They're vibrant like that to protect themselves and you know, scare off predators, or they're very dull so they can hide and be fossorial and not be caught. The snakes we have around here, you've seen, any of you seen a rattlesnake around here? Yeah, it's just a dull brown. We got the gopher snakes, they're dull brown. Little garter snakes, they're green. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, and there uh, we have the, what we call the valley garter snake here. They're green with a nice big yellow stripe down them. Yeah. Um, they're okay for pets, except that they eat fish. And when they go to the bathroom, it smells pretty raunchy. So, <laughs> thank you. So, would you like to try to see a few? Volunteers up for uh, Yeah. Are you going to be one of my volunteers or are you turning stuff off? <laughs> they're going to be volunteers. You, you go have volunteer? Yes. All right. Uh, would you like to hang out of the video?